All right, think it's safe. Think we could make the video because my board is full. So hopefully, Bill Armstrong put down put down the phone. Uh, it's over. Pretty, you know, active for the Coyotes in terms of just general trade deadlines. Not too many big names. A lot of depth movement. A lot of the big names were traded over the weekend. But I was really surprised with how active Arizona was, and they were doing some off the board stuff that uh, you know. Honestly, this is what Bill Armstrong's second trade deadline. The first one last year kind of came back in his face. He said he trusted the team so much that uh, the real the team really you know proved that they could push for a playoff spot, and they wanted to keep everyone together. And then that flew in his face, and they went on such a bad losing streak. But for Bill Armstrong's first you know official trade deadline with the rebuild and a new direction and everyone on the same page. It went pretty well. Um, let's just get into it. He signs two college players, one of them whose college season just ended, uh, Jack McBain. I always want to say Jake. I'm not sure why. But Jack McBain played for Boston College. His season just ended. Boston College got eliminated. He's a 6'3 centerman, former third-round pick of the Minnesota Wild. Did not want to play for Minnesota because he didn't want to compete for their center depth. He wants to be an NHL player right away and not compete for ice time. He wants a lot of ice time. He played on uh, Team Canada's Olympics, and we'll talk about the Olympics a lot this video for for whatever reason. But McBain is a big, strong, good hockey IQ centerman with great skill. The only knock against him is his skating. People see he's got average skating. Reminds me of Dylan Strome. So we'll see how that turns out. But I I've been saying it for a while. The Coyotes center depth. Their pipeline for centermen is bare. They just have Barrett Hayden. Um, I was really hoping for this draft upcoming up that they draft a lot of centers. I, honestly, I want them to use their first two picks in that first round and draft centermen. For sure, their, their first you know, top three pick or what have you it turns out to be will be a centerman. But yeah, they need to beef up their center line position. Um, you know, just Barrett Hayden and a Travis Boy. Can't disrespect Boy. I do, I do that a lot. But yeah, pretty good. He's got 33 points in 24 games played in the NCAA. 19 goals, 14 assists. And he's part of the Oliver Ekman Larson and Connor Garland trade because we gave Minnesota the 2022 second round pick that Vancouver gave us for Garland and OEL. So that trade continues to pay dividends. And what's funny is that a second round pick is the lowest value second round pick Arizona has. We all know Arizona had five second round picks. They had Arizona, the Islanders, the Flyers, the Sharks, and the Canucks. And it looks like right now the Canucks will finish ahead of all those other four teams. So this is the highest draft order pick or in other terms lowest value pick in the second round the Coyotes have. So, you know, they get Dylan Gunther, they get to try out Jack McBain for three years, and uh, we'll see how that turns out. I'm glad it's a centerman, and I don't know if he'll play right away. Um, his season did end, and college players are allowed to play once their season ends in the NHL. But, uh, you know, in terms of the tank and everything, maybe just wait till next year, but we'll see. Maybe he plays immediately. A lot of people talk highly about him, just as with Nathan, Nathan Smith. So I don't know how that works out with the tank. If these two players come in, they dramatically improve our center depth immediately. So not sure how that's going to work out in terms of the tank perspective. But let's move on to Nathan Smith, who's tied for second in the NCAA in terms of points. So maybe Smith is even better than McBain, but... You know, I haven't researched too much about Smith. I haven't heard a lot about him. But uh, McBain, I heard a lot of people talk about him. But, you know, Smith played on the U.S. Olympic team. Now, remember, NHL players weren't allowed at the most recent Olympics. Uh, 18 goals, 31 assists, 49 points in 34 games played. Like I said, tied for second in the league. So that's pretty uh, substantial. He plays for, Min for uh, Minnesota State, but was a Winnipeg draft pick so that's the confusion boston college minnesota state but was drafted by minnesota uh smith is in the final rounds of their playoff in the ncaa so he's got time to still play college hockey before coming over 
to the Coyotes. Maybe we see, you know, what happened with Clayton Keller and his, you know, prior to his rookie year when Dave Tippett was still the coach. Clayton Keller played about three games at the end of the season. So maybe, you know, Smith comes in in the last handful of games just to show what he's got. But uh, yeah, he didn't want to sign in Winnipeg and uh, is signing with the Coyotes. It, it's kind of crazy how these players are willing to sign with Arizona. You know, all things considered, the meme about Arizona, the new arena. But to be honest, maybe Bill Armstrong thought he'd have trouble signing some free agents this upcoming summer due to the new arena situation. Maybe it's hard to swallow for some players. So to get some college players who are very you know, uh, aware and comfortable with playing in college arenas. Uh, maybe this makes sense for them. It's, it's not like they're going to complain that they're playing in a college arena when they're literally college players coming out of college. So, you know, it's a bit of a joke, but it's interesting that Bill Armstrong starting to sign players for next year. Um, he, you know, the extensions given to Boyd, Mayo, and O'Brien. It's like if Bill Armstrong finds, him, finds himself not being able to entice free agents, he, it's good that he's got some roster players already, so he doesn't really need to entice a lot more free agents. So that, that's pretty good. Also for Smith, um, he's got a unique skill set. He's very good at handling the puck, uh, very slippery, I've heard a couple of times. But Bill Armstrong has said that he's a skilled two-way center, he's relentless on the puck, and he competes hard every night. So a couple Bill Armstrong type players are both over six feet tall. McBain's six foot three. Smith is six foot one. So another centerman. Just you know, it's great that Bill Armstrong realizes the the weaknesses of the Coyotes, and is trying to improve them any way he can, and not giving up too much. He uh, he gives up a fourth round pick in twenty twenty two. The Arizona Coyotes fourth round pick, in exchange for Nathan Nathan Smith and Brian Little who will not play hockey for the Arizona Coyotes. He's on long-term injured reserve. It's a pretty hefty cap hit, so it's got two years left, so that signals to me, you know, hopefully we only have two more seasons of this, uh, maybe even next season's the last season, but two more seasons of carrying a high cap hit. Um, even uh, Andrew Ladd, he's still got one more year after this season, but total salary eight and a half million dollars i'm not sure how insurance works with that if you know the ownership has to pay that money or insurance is covering it but still it's quite a pill quite the pill to swallow but it shows that bill bill armstrong and ownership have a good relationship where where bill armstrong could be like i need to improve this team and get these players what's going to cost a bunch of money but you know maybe after getting rid of ekman larson Ownership is giving Bill Armstrong just uh, the blank check to do what he wants because they trust Bill Armstrong to, you know, make moves and clear the amount of some money. Moving on, a funny story with Hari Satiri. Pretty sure his name, first name is Hari. Uh, the Leafs signed him maybe last night or earlier in the week because the Leafs are having goaltending troubles. So they wanted some insurance. They put Mrazek on waivers. They signed this goaltender who pay, played for Finland in the, in the Olympics, who won gold. So we already got three players who played in the Olympics. And the goaltender won gold for, the, for Finland. So they put Mrazek on waivers. They signed this guy from Finland who plays in the KHL. But in order to come over to North America, he's got to clear through waivers. And then the Coyotes trade Wedgwood. And then they need a backup because they shouldn't be rolling with Vimelka and Prozatov. So they pick up Satiri. I'm assuming he he has to report to the Coyotes. I don't think he could just say no. I don't want to, you know, play for the Coyotes. I'm not going to come. But you know, he does play in the KHL. You know, there's a bunch of turmoil around Russia right now. So maybe he comes to Arizona for a month in the sunshine, and uh, plays a backup role and gets some minutes along with Vimelka. But he's got some outstanding numbers. In the KHL, he's got a 926 save percentage, a 202 goals against average. His win loss record isn't too great. Uh, maybe that's a sign of his team, their third place in their division. But in the Olympics, he went a perfect 5 0, 962 save percentage, and a 1.0 goals against average. And the pressure cooker of the Olympics, 
So that's pretty good. Maybe we'll get another situation where a go an unknown goalie comes overseas, just like Vimelka, and puts up some puts up some solid numbers. Um, speaking of Wedgwood, we did send him to Dallas for a conditional fourth round pick. The condition is if Dallas makes the playoffs this season, it turns into a 2023 third round pick. So we're all Dallas Stars fans now for the next month. Order your Dallas Star jerseys. Unfortunately, I don't have anything green in any of my wardrobe, but uh, we got to pull for Dallas to make the playoffs. It's going to be a battle between Dallas, Vegas, Vancouver. I'm assuming Vegas is going to jump into the, into the top three of the Pacific. So maybe Edmonton and LA come down in the wild card and then Dallas has to leapfrog one of them. I doubt Nashville falls out of the playoff picture, but hopefully Dallas makes a playoffs and then we traded Wedgwood for a third round pick. We literally got Wedgwood for, for free and then to turn around and train him for a third round pick. That stocks. Buy low and, and sell high. That's great asset man management by Bill Armstrong. Scott Wedgwood had an interview with Craig Morgan saying he loved Arizona. He loved the team. If he could come back to the team, he's open for to doing that. It's great for his family. So, you know, sad to see Wedgwood go, but I hope the Dallas Stars make the playoffs. I hope Wedgwood contributes into making the playoffs. And then in the offseason, maybe they talk to Wedgwood in coming back for another backup role. I thought, you know, Wedge, I like Vimelka more than Wedgwood. Vimelka's got a, a higher ceiling and more potential than Wedgwood. I feel like Wedgwood was playing way above his weight, and that, that was his highest value. That's peak value for Wedgwood and Bill Armstrong's striked gold. And um, hopefully he makes the playoffs. That's all I have to say about Wedgwood. And then um, we got a 2023rd third round pick from Washington with in return for Johan Larson. I got that one right. I had Larson on my trade bait board, the only one who got traded. We'll talk about Kessel and Chikrin a bit later. But uh, good for Larson. The Cowboys do retain some of that, a half of Larson's salary. And that signaled to me that they were not trading Phil Kessel because a hockey team could only retain three contracts at a time. They already retained on Kemper, retained on Ekman Larson, and now retained on Johan Larson. So this, this trade happened about an hour before the end of the trade deadline. So that, that signaled to me Kessel was staying put and it shows that Kessel is staying put. Let me just refresh one more time to be certain. Yep. Oh yeah, Kessel and Chikrin remain with the Coyotes, so it's officially confirmed. So, yeah, hope Larson and the Capitals. Well, actually, I don't hope they do some damage because you know that third round pick could be about a low eighties pick if Washington doesn't go far in the playoffs. They're in a wild card spot. They'll probably end up in a wild card spot. They're not favorites out in these playoffs to make it out of the first round. So. Uh, you know, that could be a low 80 pick or mid 80th pick. So, uh, you know, maybe uh, maybe that turns out to be a good player. But in the third round, it's hard. It's hard. The percentage of the amount of third round picks that become NHL players is very low. But uh, I would have never thought Larson was worth a third round pick. With regards to Kessel, the rumors were going around that teams wouldn't even give a second round pick for Kessel. And that, you know, a third round pick was the value of Kessel and no one wanted to offer a third round pick for Kessel. So as a consolation prize, we, tr we got a third round pick for Johan Larson. So I'm surprised uh, Larson hasn't played in a long time. He's been injured. Uh, we've been doing fine without Larson and we just add a third round pick for basically nothing because the team already performed well without Larson and was progressing well without, without Larson. But... He's a good defensive centerman, can play up and down your lineup if there's injuries, but he should be a fourth line guy. And he's a great shutdown guy, a great PKer, and a, it's a good move uh, for both teams. And then uh, Vimelka, I believe either last night or this morning, signed an extension for the Coyotes, $2.725 million for three years. Maybe a bit high for my liking, but... Uh, you know, he's a bit shaky sometimes, just as we saw in the San Jose game, letting in that brutal um, game-winning goal on that wraparound. But 
you know, hopefully this summer he works out hard. He knows he's got a long-term contract of three years with the Coyotes. The Coyotes could send him to some good training camps. They, they could keep tabs on him, see the way he progresses. And uh, hopefully he's just a lot better next season, more consistent. We, we know he has those games in him where he could just steal a game against high-end elite teams. We saw it against Toronto, Winnipeg, Washington, Carolina, some others where he could he could keep the team in it, even though the, the forwards and the defensemen aren't in it themselves. So it was a really active deadline for the Coyotes. A couple off the board uh, maneuvers and you know trades, transactions for the Coyotes. I'm liking uh, Vimelka signed for three years. The cap pick could be a bit lower, but it's fine. Under three million is digestible. Hopefully Sateri comes in and backs up Vimelka immediately. Prozatov needs some more time in the in the Tucson in the in Tucson with the Tucson Roadrunners. The Roadrunners haven't been, haven't been playing well since I made that video in I think January. They're on a skid. It's a rough time for them. All their defense are up with the Coyotes. Prozatov, you know, he's not winning a lot of games. Maybe that's due to the fact that their defense is pretty poor, considering we took all of them. But I don't want to rush Prozatov's development. I'm even starting to wonder if he'll even be the backup next season, but that's, you know, time for thinking in the summer. But right now, I was waiting for a backup signing because I wanted Prostov to stay in Tucson for the next month and a week um, for the end of the season. So it's good that they got, you know, a pretty well-respected numbers in Satiri, and he's coming from the KHL. Hopefully he signs and stays with the Coyotes and plays with the Coyotes. And uh, him and Vimelka take the reins of the net till the end of the season. Uh, yeah, Chikrin wasn't traded. I had a feeling he wouldn't get traded. The price was too high. A lot of the media is saying they're going to revisit it in the summer. And he'll for sure be a draft table day trade. But to be honest, I really want him to stay. I think there's no rush in trading him. He wants to stay in Arizona. It's going to be hard to replace him. I mean... The past two games against San Jose and Pittsburgh, we really miss Chikrin and J.J. Moser on the back end. We need those guys desperately. So I feel like if we trade Chikrin away, we kind of take a step back in the rebuild and adds another year or two. It's going to take a high-end defensive talent to replace Chikrin. So I'm happy he's staying. I'm happy that you know he's not playing so the tank could go well. Um, I'm not happy that he's injured, but hopefully he recovers um, fast, quickly, and, and back to speed. And as far as the tank goes, there's three teams, you know, striving for that best overall odds, Montreal, Seattle, and the Coyotes. We'll see if, you know, Philadelphia goes even, um, is it Philadelphia? It might be New Jersey. Maybe if they drop a bit more, but from now on, as a fan, I just want Coyotes to win home games for the fans. And for me, I'll be seeing two Coyote games next week in Arizona. But, you know, for the road games, just chalk it up to a loss. Play well, play competitive, be in the game. You know, just like Pittsburgh and San Jose, they're in those games for a very long time. But then late in the third, they lose those games. Those are good tank games. Um, I know it sucks to lose, but we're at that stage where we need to lose. This whole season, I was like, it's good seeing them win. I want to see some good habits, see some win streaks, but... I knew once the deadline hits um, for one month, they got to increase their lottery odds a lot because they need that number one centerman desperately. Uh, we can't have another situation like 2017, 2018, where they fall out of the lottery odds and they draft a guy like Barrett Hayden and he's not a bona fide number one centerman. We desperately need that number one centerman. That's our main goal and that's our ticket out of the rebuild. So... You know, it's going to be tough this next month, but we have to finish last or second last at least. Um, that's just the way it has to go. So that's it for me. Pretty wild trade deadline for the Coyotes. I'm um, liking the additions, and we didn't give up too much. So uh, let's look forward to the next month and into the summer where the draft is really the big show for this team. So thanks for watching, and as always, thank you for your support.